Do you like Mazda? Of course you do. And I have a slew of Mazda jibber jabber to discuss today. Check this out. We have pricing and packaging on the Mazda CX-70 large two row crossover. I will be, I think I plan on driving it this spring. I think it's in April. So stay tuned for that. We also have Mazda 6 sedan rumors and swirlings coming out of Japan. Um, we also are going to talk about the iconic SP Top Gear has some information on the drop dead sexy vehicle that I saw at the Japan Mobility Show. And Mazda is opening a new creative center in Tokyo. I feel like we got so much to talk about. So let's get right into it. If you love Mazda, smash the like button. I'm always rooting for Mazda. They're kind of the underdog out of Japan based in Hiroshima uh, and, and Western Japan, also kind of like Southern Japan. They are a small automaker and they provide incredibly built vehicles with great design and then an amazing interior quality too. They have some of the most interesting history with motorsports, with rotaries, and they're still, we'll talk rotary in this, the, this video today. And they also have just come out with a large vehicle platform that kind of like you know, put some shade on like Toyota and Honda, two of the larger automakers out of Japan and even Nissan as well. Well, Nissan has a rear wheel drive platform, but they don't really use it as much as they used to, like we saw in the old FX50, if I remember correctly. But Mazda has their own rear wheel drive platform now on their SUVs and that could sprinkle down into a sedan later in time. But we're going to start with the CX-70. It's a three row delete of the CX-90 with slightly different styling up front. I think the front end looks a little bit better here and it has blacked out accents around the vehicle, around the window surrounds the roof rails. Watch my full video where I break down the CX-70 inside and out and how it compares the CX-90. But let's get into the pricing because this is super exciting um, and I haven't looked at it yet. So let's dive right into it. CX-70 3.3 Turbo will have a starting MSRP of 40445 The Turbo S, okay, it's getting the upscale turbo as well, just like um, the CX-90. That will start at 52450 And the CX-70 plug-in hybrid, oh my gosh, that starts at 54000 and actually, I just went to the Mazda CX-70 landing page and they've updated the pricing on here. And we might have a new bronze color. I don't remember seeing this on the CX-90. So I love that copper, that shiny penny color. I've reviewed the RX500H and the Copper Crest as well. And yes, those colors are great. But here we go. Here's a better breakdown of the trim levels here. It's kind of out of order, if you can't tell. It seems like they want to sell you on the Turbo S and the Turbo S Premium Plus which are in uh, well over $50,000. You also have the plug-in hybrid premium, premium plus plug-in hybrid, and then the base models, which guys, this might be the way to go for these. I don't know why the, the image on the turbo models is low resolution. They're like, no, you don't want to buy the turbo non-S models. They're low resolution. They're not going to be the car for you, but this is um, you know, the best buy. Absolutely. You still get the inline six. It's detuned a little bit, 280 horsepower versus the 340 horsepower. 280 horsepower from an inline six with the turbocharged torque is still plenty in my opinion. Uh, you also get a leather seats base on this $40,000 model, um, as well as heated leather seats. And then you can go, you can spend about five grand more or actually about 5,500 more on the turbo premium, which will give you the larger wheels, uh, 12 inch LCD meter display. So that is the, this, the screen behind the steering wheel up to 5,000 pounds towing capacity as well. Those are available in the fall. Mind you check that out. So I'm learning I'm learning about this as we're going here. So the Turbo Premium, Premium Plus, and the Turbo Preferred models are not available at launch. So that's why they're low resolution because they're a little bit further out. They're a little bit blurry from our vision. Available spring 2024 is the plug-in hybrids, which is awesome. I'm very excited for that. I watched my review on the CX-90 plug-in hybrid. I really, really liked it. But at the prices these are coming in at, I don't know if I can recommend it when you can save $14,000 and get a preferred model. You know, I know equipment's a little bit different, but you can't go wrong with any of these powertrains. And I think that's the impressive thing uh, right here to talk about with Mazda. Now, check this out. I want to compare the CX-90 
to the CX-70 in pricing. And the CX-90 comes at a lower price point because they have this entry-level turbo select. Now, Mazda could offer that in the 2026 model year. They could sprinkle out that lower end powertrain depending on the market, right? And decontent it a little bit. Um, but the turbo preferred, I believe, is the entry-level model. Uh, at 40,000. So it, it costs more entry price than the CX-90. However, if you look at the CX-90, its price is exactly the same to the CX-70, at least when it comes to the turbo preferred model. It looks like they're going to be the exact same. No preferred plus. Check that out. Mazda's not including preferred plus here. Now, Mazda's trim levels, you look at the CX-90, they're already, there's already too many of them. And this is just the turbo model, not the, the plug-in hybrid. So keep that in mind. We'll get into plug-in hybrid pricing after this. We have nothing to compare with the preferred plus. So let's go down to the premium here. 45,900 is exactly the same, except you don't get a third row of seats here on the CX-70. Um, what about, do we have a uh, premium plus 48.9 and it's 48.9. So it looks like Mazda's mirroring pricing and packaging seemingly for the CX-90 to the CX-70. It's just, you have your choice between three rows or two rows, but it's almost like, you know, if it's the same price, why not just get the third row of seats? Maybe at some point in time, you might want to have that third row of seats. They fold down into the floor anyways. You know, I was hoping that the CX-70 would come in at a lower price point, make some sense out of this, but really it seems like it's exactly the same price of the um, CX-90 trim for trim. All right, check this out. We don't have a base Turbo S model. It's at Turbo S Premium, and therefore we're comparing it to this guy because if you want that 340 horsepower you spend around fifty thousand dollars here it's about 52 plus destination so fifty three thousand. Uh, but if we compare it again to the turbo s premium right here it's exactly the same price and the turbo s premium plus 55,950, and it's exactly the same price again now let's compare plug-in hybrid. Maybe we can find a loophole here where the plug-in hybrid CX-90 is maybe a little bit more expensive. So we get a better deal on the CX-70 plug-in hybrid, but I don't think that's gonna happen. And you can see right here, the CX-90 plug-in hybrid comes in five grand cheaper roughly than the CX-70 plug-in hybrid. So let's build off the CX-90 so we can compare against the CX-70 down below. So the CX-90 plug-in hybrid just has three trim levels. All of them have the same horsepower and torque, which will be the exact same horsepower and torque on the CX-70. It looks like we just have two trim levels for the CX-70 plug-in hybrid, the premium, which at 54.4 is the exact same price, and the premium plus, which is exactly the same price as the CX-90 Premium Plus. So now that the pricing is identical spec for spec, just that the CX-70 isn't offering as many trim levels as the CX-90 makes it interesting to me. Now I wanna get into the builder so we can see some of the options here. Now here's an awesome new paint color. I believe it's called Melting Copper Metallic. Pretty neat name. I like the penny sort of shine and luster that it has. I'm a big fan for copper right now, so that's this way I would be trying to get this guy. Don't know how I feel with, you know, the, the non-paint matched wheel arches here. And if I build the Premium Plus plug-in hybrid, it doesn't have paint matched wheel arches either. So that's kind of a bummer. What about the Turbo S Premium Plus and the Turbo S Premium? Looks like they have paint matched wheel arches. So I wanna see what this looks like real quick with that melting copper. It looks better, absolutely. Definitely looks more premium. It's too bad that the plug-in hybrid doesn't get paint-matched wheel arches and paint-matched underbody. See, all this area down here is not paint-matched on the plug-in hybrid. It's all blacked out and it makes it look cheaper. That, oh man, that is a tough, tough one for me. So this paint color, the copper, melting copper is 450. Rhodium white and soul red are both 595. Zircon sand which, oh man, don't get this color. I just don't think it does this vehicle justice. Um, Polymetal gray is a nice color. It's decent. 
I've, I've tested it on other Mazda models, but the one that's the, that has no cost is black. So <laughs> the only way you can get a no cost pink color from Mazda with a CX-70 is going jet black mica. But no, we're getting that melting copper. What do we have? Okay, so there's also running boards. What does that look like? Does it add them on here? It doesn't add them on, onto the builder. That is unfortunate. So let's just take that off. Will the garnish be added on there? No, it won't. So come on, Mazda, get, get with your builder, make it a little bit more interactive. Okay, so interior options, red Napa leather. Uh, that is standard. That's a good one. It's just really dark. I don't know why they made it. this interior is not this dark, but they put it in like this parking garage. So it looks dark. Okay. This is like monotone black and tan. Okay. In order to get the quilted tan Napa leather, which is, you know, my number one choice, of course, because red Napa would be my second. I have to change to CX 70 turbo S premium plus. So it's only available on the complete top end spec is this quilted tan Napa leather. And again, it's just not getting any justice done to it. Um, I, I don't believe that this has the suede on it. Like the CX 90 has the suede on the dash. I think this is just leather here, which don't get me wrong. is still beautiful, but it's not that incredible, uh, you know, hang stitching or, or that, that suede that is just butter. All right, accessories, the illuminated skid plates here. This destination package comes with retractable cargo cover, cargo net, black crossbars, and first aid kit. That's not a bad deal for $625. That's not bad. Premier towing, uh, which gives you a trailer hitch, harness, tow ball mount, and brake controller. So if you plan on towing with your CX-90, you need to pay an additional 900 bucks. All-weather floor mats, padded cargo liner, black splash guards, for six twenty five, dollars prob probably worth it. I like that padded cargo liner that I saw in the B-roll. Here's some paint protection um, with some clear film, it looks like. You have a digital rear view mirror, which is going to cost you 800 bucks on top of that premium plus model. And let's see here. I don't need that black lift gate garnish. And you have this higher end cargo organizer that is not styrofoam. I'm assuming that's what is going on here, but I don't, I don't know hundred percent yet. Black lug nuts, um, pet ramp. Okay. You also have pet restraints. Okay. Seat belts. Okay. So they're not marketing this for children. They're marketing this for maybe, um, couples with no kids or couples, older couples that are empty nesters. That's kind of what this CX 70 is for. The, there's the padded cargo liner, but you can get that with the packaged in with the cargo, uh, all weather cargo liners. And then you have this, uh, black crossbars. Here's a rooftop awning. Heck yes. That's only 389 bucks. That immediately turns this into a great tailgater. That's super cool. That's one of the best accessories I've seen on here. Uh, body color splash guards, 250 bucks. What, why would you even get the non body color ones? I guess they would hide dirt better if they're just black, I, I guess. I don't know. I'd be getting the body color one. So there are all the options. Let's go to next. Um, our fully kitted out CX 70 turbo S premium plus comes in at a cool 57, 775 with the melting copper metallic and the, um, you know, the tan interior. But I promise you we had other Mazda information, guys. This is coming out of Best Car, one of the most reliable sources of upcoming Japanese cars over in Japan. And they're saying that we have, the, the Mazda 6 is kind of next on the docket for this large vehicle platform. They got to come out with a CX-80 first, and that is coming out in 2024 probably by the end, right? We know the CX-70 is coming out this spring of 2024. And then, you know, the, the cheaper models of the CX-70 are available in the fall of 2024. And that's probably when the CX-80 will come out as well, which is going to be a, I'm assuming a CX-60 with a third row stuffed in the back some way, somehow. Um, that one's kind of a mystery to me at this point, but seeing how they did the CX-70 a little bit dirty by just taking the third row out of the CX-90, it's probably what's going to happen to the CX-80, just somehow fit and cram in a tiny third row in the CX-60. They're expecting the new Mazda 6 in 2025. 
That makes sense. They got all the crossovers they wanted out on this large vehicle platform by the end of this year. So 2025, uh, it would be an excellent year to roll out not only a new Mazda 6 sedan, I think it'd be a good year to roll out a new CX-5 um, and maybe a new Mazda 3 sometime around 2026, something like that. They say the current model of the Mazda 6 is still being sold. It is in Japan, but they already stopped production on it as of just a few weeks ago. So the Mazda 6 is officially dead. Now they need to switch over to a new model in the next couple of years, right? They say plans for the next Model 6, even though they are a little bit in suspension right now, they have not disappeared. It is aimed actually for the North American market. And it seems that in order to further strengthen the premium image of the large product group, it was necessary to not only have SUVs, but also a stylish luxury saloon. So we know that these large platform SUVs are starting to bite into Acura, Infiniti, and Lexus. Now this Mazda 6 sedan will absolutely cut into the Lexus ES, the Acura TLX. It'll cut into um, the Infiniti, what's left of the Infiniti Q50. So it will be interesting to see how luxurious and how good they can make this sedan. The CX-90 already handles quite impressively for such a large vehicle, and it is due to that more rear-wheel drive bias nature to it. Now, the Mazda 6, I have a good feeling that they could just offer a rear-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive. They're going to give you the option. That's what I'm crossing my fingers for. You might be saying, Kirk, no, they just offer all-wheel drive in all their crossovers, so why would they you know, make it special for the Mazda 6 to be rear-wheel drive or at least have the option of rear-wheel drive? Well, actually, in I think it's in Europe, the CX-60 has a turbo diesel, and one of the turbo diesels has a rear-wheel drive only powertrain selection, if I remember correctly. And then you have your option of all wheel drive with that turbo diesel too. I'm hoping that's the case here for this Mazda 6. They're saying the power units are going to be identical to, uh, to the ones we just talked about in the CX-70. So two and a half liter plug-in hybrid with 323 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque. You'll probably see 35 miles of range or more on it, right? And then you are going to have your choice between a base inline six, 3.3 liter mild hybrid, let's say it gets 30 miles per gallon. I think, I think it's possible. I think I remember getting about 25 miles per gallon on the inline six on the CX-90. Now the Mazda Speed lover inside, right? That's all of us. We have a little zoom zoom in our hearts. I'd love to see a higher output turbo six cylinder, possibly even a twin turbo. Give us that Spirit R racing badge that they've been talking about with the Mazda 3 and the MX-5 and give it to this Mazda 6. And we're talking some serious power at that point, probably around 400 horsepower, which would be unbelievable. It would be, uh, in some ways, a uh, BMW, right? With the inline six that the Supra uses. That thing has just so much power and torque. And I know that they don't need technically a twin turbo to get there, but give us the twin turbo. That would be awesome. I know dual scroll can get most of that work done nowadays with, with modern turbo technology, but I want something a little bit more higher output than the, the 340 horsepower for getting the CX, sorry, the Mazda 6 back into America. We can dream, right? A little Mazda Speed 6 back or what they would call Mazda Spirit Racing 6. That'd be sick. But this is the design. I didn't really talk about it. It hasn't changed. I think it's gorgeous. It's very sporty. It's kind of like a... Kia Stinger sort of sloping roof line. It could be a lift back. Stay tuned. We don't know exactly how Mazda is going to do this new Mazda 6, but it's going to be impressive, no doubt. Speaking of impressive, I know this video is getting long. Mazda wants to make the RX-7 inspired iconic SP a real production car. David and I pretty much knew that this vehicle was intended to be a production car in some shape or form, the iconic SP. So I just want to get your guys' juices circulating still. 365 horsepower will be a plug-in hybrid with a dual rotor engine. Um, it's not going to have, as far as I'm aware, it's not going to have gears. It's going to be a single gear, or you could call it a, a series plug-in hybrid. So the engine, you know, you're going to hear it whine from time to time, but it's not going to be going through the gears. You're not going to have a manual transmission because it's a, like a plug-in hybrid, but 
Maybe that was the more conceptualized. Maybe we'll get a hybridized rotary engine with a manual transmission. That's, I think, what we all want, right? Or at least a, an automatic instead of a, uh, you know, an ECVT with a series hybrid. And next time I go to Japan, I would love to stop by this new Mazda Art Center slash idea center. It's designed for brainstorming and collaboration among employees, but it is going to allow to attract new recruits. And I think there would be a good tr chance that I could get myself up in here, probably with the help of David Chow, if I go with David next time around, and we'd be able to tour this new Mazda innovative space in Tokyo. They want to get bright minds from Tokyo injected into the Mazda brand because, you know, Mazda is headquartered in Hiroshima or Hiroshima. This is kind of like an outpost for them to get new thoughts and new ideas that are swirling in Tokyo and uh, infuse them into the, the company that is located westward. So uh, yeah, they also have a coffee shop in there. I've been talking so long that my camera turned off, but are you guys excited for Mazda? Do you want the Mazda 6? What are your, what are your thoughts on the CX-70? be in the exact same price as the CX-90. I just don't understand what the point of the CX-70 is. I know some people don't need three rows of seats, but if you're going to take out that third row, you might as well give them, I don't know, a thousand dollar discount? What does it cost to put a third row in the seats? Apparently it costs nothing for Mazda to put a third row of seats in the CX-90 compared to the CX-70. I'm just a little bit baffled, but Hey, maybe I'm missing something. And that's why I need you guys to comment down below with your thoughts on the pricing of the CX-70 and how it's identical to the CX-90, except it doesn't have as many trim levels. So overall, it's more expensive than the entry-level CX-90 trims. So yes, anyways, I got to shut it down. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Long live Mazda.